I think there should be a rule for the next couple seasons of The Walking Dead that we don't have to wait six months for any more episodes. <laughs> Because after, or actually it's seven months, because after this season finale, I now want to see season five. And I just found out that um, the whole spinoff show is not coming out to 2015. So that's making me even more like freaked out about this and just, I want more. I want to see more. That's my POV. But anywho, um, hey everyone, this is Sage Valentine and this is my review for... The season finale of season four of The Walking Dead, episode 16, entitled A. There were some people who tried to make a correlation between the last two episodes of this season saying since the episode 15 was U.S. or us, then episode 16 is A, must be USA, so it must be in D.C. That's a pretty awesome... Um, interpretation but however it's like way far to the left because us had to do with joe's group and a has to do with point a but before i even elaborate on that let me first say that if you've been watching my reviews i told you so terminus turned out to be the hot mess i thought it was going to be and joe was correct michonne picked it up even rick did and i'm sure carol and tyrese when they finally make it to terminus they are going to probably do exactly what Rick and um, Carl, Michonne, and Daryl did and watch from afar. But knowing Carol, she'll find another way to watch and she'll really be watching as they do what they're doing. They may get caught, they may not get caught, but with Carol, I don't know, this newfound Carol, she's pretty badass. So she may, she and Tyrese may help break them out. Yeah, they have Judith, I know that, but still, hey. I just hope they don't come in through the front door. But, anywho. Um, the episode starts with, like, this flashback of Rick and the gang. And they're still at the prison. I think this must be circa, maybe, um, a couple months after... They say it's two months after the attack on the prison. So... That's what they say later in the episode. So, um, it's just funny to me how you see Maggie, Rick, and Glenn all emerging from the car. And I never knew, really noticed it till I watched it a second time. Then Carol and Tyrese are walking together, basically like nothing's wrong and everything's cool. So, you know that there's something wrong with that scene because we all know that Rick kicked Carol out. So, they haven't seen Carol in God knows when. And it's just strange to me for me seeing, you know, Herschel alive because, as you know, Herschel's dead. But it's a strange feeling for me seeing him alive. It's like really, really, really weird. And Rick goes over, he starts stabbing some um, walkers through the fence. And the scene then cuts to Rick with a bloodstained face and blood all on his hands. And he's sitting next to a truck in a daze. So I'm saying to myself, what happened? What did he do? And where the hell is Michonne and Carl? So we basically get the, um, the opening credits. And then the next thing you know, Rick, Carl, and Michonne, they're sitting there talking about who is hungrier than whom. And Michonne seems like she's the hungriest because she is like from a scale to one to ten. And Michonne's like 28. <laughs> I'm with you, Michonne. So um, they go over to check the snares. And the funny part was that Rick was going to show Carl how to check it. And then he was like, you come too. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> I said, I know that Raccoon is like riding high on their ship after this episode. Because I am as well. And a new ship emerged. But I'll get to that when that pops up. I love how she's included. Like I said, it's a far cry from season three. And Rick is almost healed. They're close to Terminus, so we're getting somewhere in this episode. Carl wonders if they should tell the people of Terminus, you know, who they are and what they did. And he was like, well, we'll tell them who we are. And Carl says, well, who are we? Deep question from a little boy. God, that boy is older than his years. Rick finds a small rabbit and shows Carl how to set the um, snare. And the crazy thing is, as they set the snare, this is my second after watching it twice. The same way they set that snare is the same way that trap is set at Terminus. Down to a T. So, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, definitely 
rewatch that episode, watch that scene, and you'll see how he's telling him to move through the things, and it's exactly the same way they set that trap in Terminus that awaits them. Carl hears somebody scream. I guess everyone hears this man screaming. Carl runs over to see who it is. It's a man. Um, he has glasses on. He has a gun, and he's, like, basically surrounded by walkers. And people are saying, well, he could have run and gotten away. One man versus, like, 30 walkers. We're not talking about Rick, Tyrese, Daryl, or anyone else from our crew. We're talking about this man who looks weak. And he looks like he's tired, he's out of it, and... Rick won't let Carl take a shot, so basically the walkers rip the skin off his face and he's overcome and he becomes a literal zombie walker buffet. Rick decides that he and Michonne and Carl need to, to bail out and go, and as they are turning to leave, some of the walkers from the walker buffet decide this main core, this dessert isn't enough, or this little appetizer is not enough, we need the main course, so they're chasing after them, and Rick and um, the crew, they're running, they make it to the um, the train tracks, and what ends up happening is that they see these walkers eating someone or something on the train tracks and meanwhile the walker buffet crew is coming out and it's just like damn I said are they a goner like is everybody gonna make it out alive because I know there was speculation of people dying I said oh god so the scene then cuts to a scene where um Herschel's talking to Rick and one of the quotes he says is you're not going to need that It'll just get in the way. And I love how it contrasts with the scene because without Rick's gun, like, without your gun, without your um, weapons, you're a goner. Like, you need that. Like, you can fight all you can, but you got to kill him. You got to take it out, as we have been seeing in the past couple seasons. And it's just like, this was the one peaceful time where Herschel just was resigned to, you know, relaxing and we can stay here and stuff. And it's like, it's crazy how... In a couple of episodes, everything changed. So then, um, they basically kill and then they run and run. They're still hungry. And they start, like, they continue walking and they see this broken down, um, truck. And they see this walker who looks like he's melted down. Like, somebody set him on fire and he's, like, melted down into nothing. So I'm wondering... No, nah, that's a long shot. I'm not even going to touch that fire. That's a long shot. Um, Carl is asleep in the truck. Meanwhile, Michonne and Rick are just sitting down there talking, like a little wishful thinking about food. I think they ate that little rabbit, and they said it wasn't enough, but it was good that they had food. They hear some rustling nearby. It's like late in the evening. And I'm thinking to myself at this time, I'm like, you know what? After watching this the second time, I'm saying, I wonder, was that the first warning sign that Joe's team was, like, there in the area, like, right in that scene? But anyway, it turns out to be a false alarm, and Michonne says, I wonder if the whole thing is legit. Rick basically says, well, we let people in, and Michonne's like, so did the governor. That's like, touche. So we don't, Rick is like, we don't get to know until we know that this is even there anymore. So both of them are skeptical the way that all of us, for the most part, have been skeptical about Terminus. So all of a sudden, Rick gets a gun to his head, and it's Joe and Joe's group. So from the last episode, as they were walking with Daryl, it was clear after they zoomed in on that candy bar that they were inching towards Rick and the crew. Michonne's about to go for her katana when it's kicked away by Tony, who was the guy that was strangled and nearly died, and he saw Rick... He has a gun to her, and there's two other men that appear, and they're armed. And then there's this one guy that's, like, losing his hair with a ponytail, and he's looking at Carl through the window like Carl is a cupcake or something, and he hasn't had dessert in ten years. Joe says to Rick, you screwed up, asshole. Today's the day of reckoning, sir. Restitution. The balance of, balancing of the whole damn universe. And he mentioned something about it being New Year's Eve, which I should have noticed from the time because it seems like everybody's like wearing like kind of jackets and coats and covering up in this scene. So I guess we've made it to December. So maybe the time from the beginning of the season was maybe, I don't know, maybe like October, November. Now we're going into December. So 
I assume season five will probably end up during the winter because we have yet to see a winter. So I guess we're getting there. So just as um, Joe starts doing this whole countdown ball drop before he shoots Rick, here comes Daryl out of the blue. Because I was looking for Daryl. I'm like, where is Daryl? To everyone's in of surprise, including Michonne, Carl, and Rick's. The look on his face is priceless indeed. And there's a new ship called Rick's Own, Rick, Daryl, and Michonne. And it's Rick's Own indeed. I'm sure that they were looking at that scene like, good lord, we got our place in the sun. I think there'll be more Rick's Own uh, scenes coming up pretty soon in the next season. Daryl tries to get the group to back off. But one of the guys said, well, Lou died and there's nothing we can have to talk about. Daryl wants them to let them go. They're good people. If you want blood, you take it from me. However, Joe sees that as being a lie and has Daryl basically beaten up by those two extra guys to teach him. Um, Carl snatched out of the car, held at knife point. Michonne struggles. Like, she really wants to go over and, like, attack that guy, but she remembers that that guy has a gun in her face, and he says, wait your turn. I said, you're going to eat every word you just said, Tony. Joe basically says, you know what? We're going to beat Daryl to death. We're going to have our way with Michonne. Then Carl. Then we're going to shoot and kill you, and then we'll be square. The heavy guy, like, tries to hold down Carl, and Carl's like, inching over reaching over for that knife rick headbutts joe in the nose the gun goes off by rick's ear his ear is ringing and that to me it signifies a change in rick like a wheel kind of clicking something clicking in his mind rick throws a punch but he is then hit by joe kicked and everything i'm thinking like rick you just started healing your ribs are healing now you're getting kicked again i'm like damn you're gonna be in a whole lot of pain by next season Michelle makes a move. The gun goes off next to her, and then Tony slaps her. I said, that's strike two, Negro. That is strike two. So Carl turns, like, then turned on his stomach, and so I kind of, like, we know where this is basically going. So Rick gets up. He tussles with Joe, who's holding him in some type of vice grip. Rick takes that opportunity, leans in, and 